Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Derek Thorsland, the Director of Product Management for our HDX Technologies at Citrix. And you know, when I joined Citrix and I found the Virtual Channel SDK, I went on a mission from God. This is the Virtual Channel SDK that is going to enable all kinds of wonderful capabilities for ZenApp and Zen Desktop. All right, what is this thing? Well, the foundation of the Virtual Channel SDK is ICA, the industry leading protocol for remoting. ICA stands for the Independent Computing Architecture and it's the foundation of the HDX software stack. HDX is our brand for high definition experience. So it includes all the technologies that we have in our Citrix portfolio to deliver great graphics, audio, video, and peripheral device support. ICA is a network protocol, and it's the protocol between the user device running the Citrix receiver and the Citrix server running the virtual delivery agent, or VDA, whether that's Zen Desktop in a VDI environment or Zen App with Windows Server RDS. It's a general purpose presentation services protocol, and all elements of the user experience are transferred between the client and server. So that includes things like keyboard, mouse, audio data, graphics, and so on. When we peel back ICA and we look at that protocol in more detail, what we find is that inside that big cable, so to speak, are numerous virtual channels. These sub-channels are the key to this whole technology. As you see on the slide, there's sub-channels for many different purposes. The thin wire, is for graphics. We have client drive mapping, clipboard printing, generic USB, and so on. The virtual channel SDK allows you to extend this with, with new virtual channels. Characteristics of ICA virtual channel, well, they're bi-directional and they're error-free, so you're guaranteed a reliable transport across the network. The base ICA protocol handles all the connection and disconnection, authentication, and encryption. So using the virtual channel SDK eliminates a lot of work for you because Citrix has done it for you. So it facilitates generalized packet data transfer between the receiver client and the connected session. With the virtual channel SDK, you can write the two pieces of code you need to make all this happen. So one is on, on the server side where you write your application. The second is on the client side where you write what's called a virtual driver. And then you can take advantage of this bi-directional error-free communication. So why use the virtual channel SDK? Well, we're going to look at some examples later on in the presentation. But basically, this is a tool that allows you to add functionality above and beyond what comes out of the box with Zen App and Zen Desktop. And there's no charge to use this SDK. No extra license required. It's there on the Citrix Developer Exchange for you to take advantage of. What skills do you need to code with the Virtual Channel SDK? Simply C programming, that's really all it is. On the server, any application or service can make use of the provided APIs. And on the client, you're given the tools to write a Virtual Channel driver, which you write in C. That's a DLL that you load into the Citrix receiver's HDX engine. So the Virtual Channel SDK supports Zen App, Zen Desktop, including VDI in a box, and also our remote PC access VDA, which provides access to physical machines in the office for workers in a meeting room or from home or wherever they might be. On the client side, the virtual channel SDK today is available for the Windows receiver, Linux receiver, and Mac receiver. In the SDK, you'll find some example programs that'll really make it easy for you to get familiar with this SDK and how to use it. The three examples are ping, mix, and over. A ping's a simple program that sends a round trip delay, or records a round trip delay, or a ping time, for a test packet over the virtual channel. It sends a packet to the client, the client responds with another packet with the time that it received the first packet, and it repeats this uh, several times, and computes the average. 
Uh, mix is an interesting one because it demonstrates how you can call functions on the client. Now, for example, you might want to get the time of day on the client because the user could be in a different time zone from the Citrix server. And then the over program example shows you how to write asynchronous applications where the server will receive a response from the client at any time and with arbitrary data. So let's take a look at the ping example. Um, to, uh, to look at this example, you're creating a server-side application that runs within the ICA session, and your application uses the APIs in our SDK to send and receive data packets from your client-side virtual driver. And there's uh, some code snippets um, in this uh, presentation. The code fragment here doesn't show the uh, virtual open and close function, but in the SDK you can see the full ping example. Basically what you can see from this snippet is that the interface is basically packet write and packet read. Now on the client side you need to create a DLL according to the directions in the SDK. You're going to copy that DLL into the same location as the ICA client or HDX engine. The SDK then explains how you register your driver with the receiver. Once you've done that, your DLL will be loaded into the Citrix receiver ICA engine process. Obviously, you must have the correct interfaces as described in the SDK, and then you can transfer and receive packets. And here's part of the client-side ping example. Basically, a key function here is ICA data arrival. That's the function which is called when virtual channel data is received from the server. And then send data is an example of a set of callback functions available in the virtual driver. Now, it's up to you as the developer to handle marshalling of data structures uh, into protocol packets and dealing with issues like the, uh, the byte order, uh, you know, the, li the little endian or big endian issues. What can you do with the virtual channel SDK? Well, it's up to you. It's really up to your imagination. It provides communication between two applications over an ICA channel. So you might use it for administrative functions. Uh, for example, you might uh, communicate with the client to query a local database application there, or to inventory the client, perhaps to check for installed applications, or to see if there's a virus scanner on that client. You might use it to start up a media player on the client and control that from an application in the user's remote session. Another uh, very good purpose for the uh, SDK is to handle specialty devices. Now, out of the box, Citrix has a number of different virtual channels, as we saw, for different device types. And for specialty devices, we offer a generic USB redirection channel. But with the virtual channel SDK, you can create a more optimized virtual channel for your device that might perform better over more strenuous network conditions, where there might be a high latency or, or network uh, jitter. Here's an example of a vendor, Cisco, who's used our virtual channel SDK. In this case, for unified communications applications, the very popular Jabber client. And Jabber, of course, provides a great experience for not only presence and instant messaging, but in particular for voice and video. As you can imagine, uh, video in particular can be a challenge in a VDI environment or RDS environment because of the workload that video processing puts on the server. So by using our virtual channel SDK, Cisco has been able to offload that to a client-side media engine called the VXME. The VXME, or Virtual Experience Media Engine, uh, is the key to all of this. It implements the codecs and the SIP signaling required for real-time communications, providing a high-definition user experience. The VXME is available today on Linux devices, and Citrix has announced plan or C Cisco has announced plans for a Windows version of that as well. So if we look at how this uh, technology now works, instead of running the entire Jabber client with its media engine on the Citrix server, we're really only running the UI of Jabber on the server. There's a virtual channel between that Jabber UI and the client, the user device. And over that virtual channel, there's no voice or video going. It's, it's simply command and control information. So for example, make a call. 
And then when the VXME media engine running with Citrix receiver receives that make a call instruction, it handles everything locally. So all that media processing, all that heavy lifting is happening on the client device. Another good example, a recent example, is a 3D space mouse. This is a specialty device that's used by design engineers in many industries, aerospace, automotive, and so on. They use this 3D space mouse to navigate through large three-dimensional models, uh, intensive graphics. Now, the 3D space mouse can be supported with generic USB, which is available out of the box. But since Citrix doesn't offer generic USB for the Mac receiver today, our partner 3D Connection, the Citrix Ready partner, used our SDK to develop a custom virtual channel. Now, not only did that allow them to serve users on the Mac, but it also allowed them to optimize the protocol, provide a more efficient and responsive user experience over more difficult network connections. So th those are just a couple of examples. The sky's the limit. And you can learn a lot more about our virtual channel SDK on the Citrix Developer Exchange site where you'll find full documentation as well as the examples that I just showed. Thank you.